Uh, this morning's uh, speaker, uh, Thomas Sprinkmeyer, correct? Um, graduated from uh, UniSA in '92, electrical engineer, where he was seduced by PCs in, in his first year. He's been working as a software engineer ever since for eBall Computing in a variety of projects, uh, usually with heavy mathematical signal processing uh, and network components, uh, occasionally interfacing with the real world. Uh, he was intrigued by free as in beer about a decade ago and subverted by free as in speech soon after. Uh, we will have to accommodate him. He's a recovering sysadmin uh, who's recently lapsed back into bad habits. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. Thank you all for showing up. Um, I'd like to introduce my co-presenters, Emma and Alexander. And, uh, I'm here to brag about how much fun I've had on a little project that I've been doing for the last year or so. Um, oh, uh, please excuse, due to technical difficulties, there's a sort of a black line here. There is absolutely awesome content there. Take my word for it. But it's not visible. Anyway, um, one geek per classroom. Because geeks don't grow on trees. Um, Emma? Oh, sorry, not, not yet. Cool. <laughs> uh, so what I've been doing for the last year and a bit is I've gone into these kids' classrooms and uh, done some volunteering work showing them um, a couple of geek things. Emma, next, please. Uh, the company I work for, Ebor Computing, uh, we're a so South Australian software firm and we do all sorts of scientific and mathematical stuff. Uh, we also have a smart move project where it's a taxi dispatch system. We just sort of broke 900 cars or something like that. Um, I've also been farmed out to another company, Coda Wireless, and both of those companies have been really, really good about giving me sort of, you know, mornings off to go and do this classroom stuff. So thank you to them. So who am I? Um, I'm a father. I'm a geek. I'm an open source advocate. I'm an Akela, which is a Cub Scout leader, I think brown owl for anybody from that side of the pond. And um, I have volunteered for the school canteen, faith, reading, all that sort of stuff. But I've always sort of wanted to do a little bit more. And um, it wasn't actually until last night's dinner that I realized I had done something a little like more before. I was lucky enough to get an OLPC, an XO and actually went to the classrooms and showed the kids the XO and explained a little bit about what it's about and why it's so different from a traditional laptop that they might be used to and, and what are the many awesome things that it does. <clears throat> so why am I doing this? Um, there is an ever-widening understanding gap. The technology that we use every day, like this humble little black shiny thing here, I dare anybody in this room to actually explain how all of it works, from the lithium polymer battery to the six kinds of radio to the quantum tunneling memory storage device. All that stuff, nobody understands it anymore. And unless you understand technology, you cannot fix it and you cannot improve it. Arguably, the single most important invention for telecommunication was the rotary dial switch. That was not invented by a guy in a turtleneck. That was invented by a guy who saw a problem understood the technology and improved it. So unless we have people who understand the technology, we're never going to get it improved. Or we're never going to get it improved for us. We're going to get it improved for the people who do understand it, to do the things they want. I think we've had a couple of keynotes on just this sort of stuff. We have a lot of lessons where we're taught how to do things which sequence of mouse buttons to click and, and, and which tick boxes to check, but we don't have any understanding or teaching about why we're doing these things. You can get through an entire TAFE course on, 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 on access database without learning words like primary key and foreign key. So there's an awful lot of walled garden type stuff. Okay, here's a technology. Go ahead and use it. If you don't like it, you're wrong. I don't like that. <coughs> um, Rather grandiosely, I think what I'd like to do is to inspire some kids and then unleash them on the world. Emma? <laughs> the really horrid thing was when my kids came home with homework on PowerPoint. I knew something had to be done. <laughs> 
with apologies to the onion for their awesome cover. <laughs> Emma? Okay, so um, as I said, I, I sort of slightly got in there once with the XO. I mean, who can resist one of those cute little green monsters? Um, but what happened end of 2010 is our uh, high school, pr uh, primary school principal managed to score a great big bucket load of Lego. And, oh, I forgot to mention, I welcome questions at any time. Please don't be shy. Um, and there, there will be goodies, giveaways and stuff like that, not necessarily for good questions. Anyway, um, they got some Lego Mindstorm. And I happened to be there when they were talking about it, and they happened to mention that, well, now we need a geek to show us how to use it. And, you know, the old saying, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. This was my foot in the door. This is where I could sort of jump in and do something. So what did I want these sessions to be? Um, I wanted them to be educational. It's a school after all, they kind of ought to do that. I wanted them to be technological. Um, I wanted them to be free and open source software based. Uh, I'm an advocate for that. Uh, so they had to be free as in speech. Uh, I'm also a parent, as you can see, almost. Um, <laughs> Every now and then the kids would come home and they had been signed up to some great website and they had been signed up to some great service and it was only a couple of dollars a week and it, it kind of adds up. I really wanted to, this to be free as in ginger beer because I didn't want to put another burden on the parents. So whatever I did, I wanted the kids to be able to take home and play with at home, experiment with at home and not have to exclude a couple of kids because their parents said, oh God, another five bucks below this. Okay, I never, 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 never wanted it to be the free as in steak knives. You know, free as in free chance to win. Free as in, oh, well, all you have to do is buy this and you get it. All you have to do is sign up here and give us all your personal details and you get that. It was supposed to be, you know, free the way we understand the word free. Emma? So I had a couple of tools that I was going to use, right, rely rather, rather heavily on. Um, a live DVD, more on that. Later, I, um, I used a media wiki, wiki to initially just on my laptop to keep track of things, but um, I got a very, very kind offer of free hosting I just couldn't turn down. Thank you. <laughs> um, so now it's live and on the net. Uh, obviously, the Lego Mindstorm. Um, there's a, a set of cybersecurity classes sort of things called Buddy, made by the Australian government under a rather nice license that allows you to copy it for just this sort of purpose, so I did. Um, and circuit glue, Play-Doh, LEDs, toothbrushes, magnets, the kind of stuff someone like me has lying around at home, and hopefully most of you. So um, the sessions I did, um, automotive. I kind of built a little Lego car trying to demonstrate the kind of things you might find in a real car. You know, suspension, rack and pinion steering, gearbox differential, showed it around. It actually lasted about three weeks before I saw it in little pieces, so that was kind of cool. Uh, blinking lights, um, everything is better with blinking lights. Bristle bots, which were unbelievably awesome, and I actually have some here. Uh, canal locks. Um, I come from Adelaide, just down the road there's Glenelg, we have a set of locks and well you know the, the, the two gates and the sets of pumps and, and there's actually a, an unbelievably cool set of activities called G-Compri, if you have kids you must have G-Compri and they have a little um, activity where you can help Tux get his boat from one water level to the other through a canal lock so you know that, that was a good um, test run for the live DVD. Um, circuit simulator, uh, didn't work so well, a bit more on that later. I did some cryptography stuff, a very simple substitution cipher. Again, I've, I've improved it now, but the last time I ran it, I really wasn't happy. Uh, cyber safety, the, the buddy program. Uh, Dodgem, uh, my favorite session, but the one I'm really sad didn't work, but it worked. It didn't work for all the right reasons. Um, it, the idea was to build a Lego Dodgem and then program it and, and see it running around the screen. Now, if you think you can put a bucket of Lego in front of kids and say, and now children, you will follow these instructions, you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> because they won't. And that's exactly what Lego's about. So I really, really, really wanted the kids to have these little things zooming around the floor and bumping into each other, but it just did not work. Um, 
uh, I, 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 it was a double session. I was given all the time. I just didn't work. But like I said, it, did, it failed for the right reason. So I'm happy, kind of, but sad. Um, GNU CAP, another GCompre um, activity where you can draw simple circuits. Guido van Robot. Um, Python programmed robot that tries to work its way out of a maze. Some really cool stuff. I had a toy helicopter, and the school happened to have a brand new hall for some reason. So um, I, had a great <laughs> I had a great way to test that. Uh, that was my excuse to, you know, I'm teaching you about helicopters. I'm not making use of a school hall to, te to play with my toy. Um, the live DVD sessions. Uh, melting silver. Now, um, I'm actually the black sheep in a family of awesome craftspeople, uh, master gold and silversmiths. And uh, what I got my dad to do was, he's a master gold and silversmith, he has been forever, to actually melt some silver. I took a, film, took a movie of it, and then I brought the stuff in that he used. Silver granules, the form, the crucible, and it was one of those, yeah, this might keep the kids busy for 20 minutes, but they were enthralled for the whole session. That, that, that's one of those really cool, hey, they, they, they're interested, this is good, this is what I'm aiming for. Um, paper aeroplane and helicopter making, uh, found a bunch of PDFs on, online, you print them out, there's an instruction sheet, there's a page with the creases pre-marked on, and the kids just went nuts making paper aeroplanes. <laughs> Apologies to the class next door, we were a bit loud. <laughs> um, Railgun. <Yeah. laughs> Whenever I, um, yeah, I'm narcissistic. Whenever I Google my site, that's like the second or third link that comes up. So for some reason, people are interested in railguns. Uh, it's not actually that um, dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> what I did was um, demonstrate Lorenz's law by, I'm not, yeah. I got, I got some rare earth magnets and I demonstrate Lorenz's law by putting it on the table. Two copper conductors, another one on top, shorter capacitor through it, and the little wire flies off. Whee! So, um, Lorenz's law, whatever. It's one of those things where you, you know, go and talk about, okay, and this is how motors work, and this is how generators work, and hopefully some small fraction of that will stick, and maybe in a science class, you know, five years from now, one of the kids says, hang on, that's what that weird guy did. Hey, it makes sense now. And if not, they all had fun, and they watched a the little wire fly off and a spark come off, so that was cool. Um, regenerative braking. Um, that was a sort of an accidental thing. I was just messing around with a Lego Mindstorm um, that they gave me one of the kits to, to play with, and I discovered that um, it actually really nicely demonstrates the kind of regenerative braking you have in an electric vehicle, where you, know, you spin one motor, and, and it spins the other motor, motor equals generator, and you hold it still, and turning that one becomes more difficult because you're absorbing the energy. And uh, yeah, that sort of became a session. <clears throat> Rocketry, one of the many, many things I have taken away from LCA and used in class. Last year I was, um, I was gonna say I attended LCA, but I mostly missed LCA because I was building rockets and flying them. <laughs> and I took that along and showed it to the kids. <clears throat> Simple machines, levers, um, inclined planes, that sort of thing. Social networking, I'm kind of an anti-Facebook guy and other networks like that, but I'm also a hypocrite because I have Gmail. And I went along and I talked to the kids about, you know, where does your free account actually come from and, and, and how does it get paid for? Another session that was supposed to take 10 or 15 minutes, but you realize who has Facebook accounts by the people coming up with all the really interesting questions. And an awesome suggestion, I was sort of talking about how everything is, is logged and timestamped, and this kid says, what if I change the clock on my computer? <laughs> that's a really cool idea. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry it doesn't work, but that's a cool idea. <laughs> so, yeah, the, they're thinking. That's really cool to see. Uh, solar system. There are two, uh, two pr programs in particular, Celestia and Stellarium, which allow you to have a sort of a virtual observatory. One of them actually moves around the planet so you can fly from Mars to Jupiter. Really, really cool. Squishy circuits, which I have here. Again, a bit more on that later. Um, Not yet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, steel needle compass making. U using the magnets, you know, actually magnetize a needle and float it in a, in a glass jar and, and watch it align itself. Emma. So blinking lights. Um, well, there's a battery off to the side. Just talking to the kids about, well, you all know about maps. You know about the symbols you see on maps. Well, this is kind of a map for an electric circuit. And 
you know, just like you have a shopping center symbol that doesn't actually look like a shopping center, there's a switch symbol that doesn't actually look like a switch. And then a little bit of circuit glue. This is glue that conducts electricity. A um, couple of components and all the kids got a little light. You press the light, you press the button, the light comes on. Uh, out of a class of 30 odd kids, about 10 years old, working with circuit glue and circuits which they'd never worked be with before, each and every one of them worked. Okay. The thing that kept happening is the kids would surprise and amaze me with how well they did. Unbelievably awesome. Next one, please, Emma. Bristle bots. <clears throat> These are awesome. A toothbrush head, battery, battery holder, a pager motor. It's a little motor that has an off center little uh, weight on it. And next, please. If you assemble them just right, you end up with one of these. You put the battery in, the, the pager motor makes the whole thing vibrate and it skittles across the desk. <coughs> so there's me planning to take over the world by building an army of these things. <laughs> what I did is, depending on the age of the class I was working with, I pre-assembled parts of it and let them do the rest. So what I actually have with me, you can have one but you must give it to a child when you're done playing with it. Can you hand those out? So what I have with me is sort of Mark II. Uh, I got sick of stripping the insulation of wire, so I'm just using some pre-tinned wire. Um, I soldered the motor onto the battery holder. I pre-tinned the other lead. I stripped the wire. And I got the kids to do all the rest of the soldering. 50 kids, one slightly scorched finger two if you can't mind. <laughs> I had to use two extra bots. One because one of the uh, motors had the thingy pulled out. I don't know how it happened. I don't want to know. And one because I had a very, very heartfelt plea for one for their little brother. So, you know. <laughs> out of a class of 50 kids, for them to, you know, get it so right that I only needed two spares and I only had one slightly burned finger. I mean, that, that the, the, like I said, the kids continued to amaze me with how well they were doing. So um, that's one of the really cool sessions. Next one, please. Cyber safety. Now, this is that buddy thing. You can go online or um, you can copy the stuff. It's, it's on the live DVD. Uh, there are two versions of it, one for primary school, one for secondary school. And the idea is you go along and by answering questions about cyber security, you um, get parts for your robot and you can build up a cool robot. So. Uh, they don't get it all right, of course. Um, I mean, I know better than them. Uh, some of the answers are wrong, but it's, it's a really cool activity for them, and um, it keeps them out of your hair for the rest of the session. You just say, there's a URL, and then you sit back. Very simple. Emma? Ah. New cap. This is... Oh, sorry. Forgot. My printouts don't quite match. Um, who in this room has ever walked down a hallway and there are light switches at both ends? Pretty much everybody. Keep your hand up if you know how they're wired up to actually make that happen. Exorgate. Without saying exorgate, with an actual <laughs> switch. <laughs> I'm not talking about the electronic widgery doodads. I mean the old fashioned, you know, mechanical switches type stuff. Okay, quite a lot of you. Thank you. This is GNU cap, and this is a circuit that kind of explains that. You have two switches that go either up or down, and if they're both in the same position, the light's on. If, if they're both in opposite position, the light's off. So this is one of the sessions where, uh, kind of slowly building up to this circuit, talking about it, and then eventually... Oh, I, th I think there's things for people up the back on some as well, if there are any left. Um, yeah, so eventually it gets to this point here, um, and, then, and then the rest of the session you just let the kids run free. And uh, it's really cool, they, they make circuits with 400 batteries in them and all kinds of cool stuff. This is really, yes, question? I just wanted to say something about decompre. If you install it in one of the kids, you turn the volume down, because you'll wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat with the music going through your head. Yes. <laughs> I will repeat that for the microphone, it is very good advice. Turn the volume down. It has a very annoying theme music, and it's at a, like 110% volume. And uh, yes, turn, turn the volume off. But I work very early in my son's headphones. Oh yes. <laughs> or give your children headphones. 
But yeah, Deacon Pre is really wonderful. It starts with some very, very simple things like can you hit both shift keys at the same time and then the ball goes straight and Tux catches it and he's happy. It goes to can you move the mouse and water some plants. There is really cool stuff in there for little kids all the way up to this sort of stuff and older. And um, yeah, fantastic stuff. I love it. Okay, so yeah, so you, um, this, this activity here is also kind of aimed to be a little bit entertaining. If you short out a battery, it sort of gets a <laughs> squeezed thing and, and looks really horrifying. <laughs> if you put too many batteries in the circuit, you blow your light bulbs and they go black. So yeah. it's, it's lots of fun for the kids. Um, you have several different levels, and depending on the level, you get different circuits. So the, the next level, you, ha you have diodes, and, and you know, in here you have a rear stat, so you can do light dimmers and stuff. It's really fun stuff. Guido van Robot. Now, okay, so there's Guido, there's the maze, there's a beeper that he's trying to find, and over there on the right, you have to program Guido to find the beeper. It's a dialect of Python, and it is deliberately limited. He doesn't even know how to turn right. So this is a wonderful opportunity to teach children how simple, not to say stupid, computers really are. And to kind of say, you know, my job as a software engineer is to combine little instructions to make to teach the computer how to do more important things. So, again, uh, kids who've never seen programming, it's really weird, nobody wants to be a firefighter anymore, everybody wants to be a games programmer, but nobody's actually ever done any programming. <sighs> Figure. Um, for kids who've never seen programming before, they all managed to do this, and uh, hopefully they all got a little bit of an appreciation of what it takes to program. Uh, I know there are graphical environments that are a little bit easier to use and stuff, but I just wanted to sort of, you know, torture them with ASCII, so. <laughs> what what yeah. age um, did you get to program this sort of stuff? What age did I get to program? Uh, a year five and a split year three, four class. So that's um, eight, nine, ten, seven. that's seven, that sort of age range. And uh, yeah, uh, you make it a bit of fun. You sort of say, okay, so you're telling Guido to step forward and Whoa, there's a wall, so you run into it. <laughs> Uh, they, they really get into it and they have fun. Um, you, can, you can even program the maze differently and, and there's a maze editor and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's a fun activity. Yeah. Next please, Emma. The live DVD. Possibly the most time consuming of all the tasks. Possibly because I had a very slow computer to start. But you go to um, uh, the Ubuntu customization kit on SourceForge and remastering an Ubuntu CD becomes trivially simple. You can add content that you want. You can remove content that you want. There is a very, very important step that I neglected the first time around, which is neutering, which is to make sure that the DVD is not live as in Grenade, cannot be used to reinstall the PC, cannot be used to examine image folders or whatnot once the thing is running. So what I've done in the second generation of the DVD is <coughs> I've removed the installer, I, I remove all the device nodes, and I remove sudo, from the logged in user to make this thing safe. It's a little conflicting. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm giving the kids a cut down version that doesn't have all the freedom and all that sort of stuff, but it also is a lot less dangerous. And I get a lot fewer calls from parents about why is my computer suddenly booting into Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do all the work in a virtual box, it makes it really simple and easy to test because, you know, just boot a virtual machine off the image I just created. Um, for people who, you know, really can't get used to the Ubuntu Brown Windows scheme, uh, there are Windows installers for some of the games. Uh, I got the class to design their own cover art. I had intended for the whole class to do one, but they did one each, so that was a little bit more work. But what I did then is, is I got some blank DVDs printed, um, thanks to one of the guys in the office, and handed out the kids their own copy of this DVD with their own cover art on it. Oh, permission slips. The, the school very, very wisely sort of made parents sign a permission slip before I gave them a, a live CD. Um, everybody got their CD with their cover art, but the, where I didn't get the slips back, they just got a blank DVD to do whatever they wanted to with. <coughs> so this is a liberated PC lab at school. About 25 or so, no, about 15, 20 yeah. computers. Uh, they just had a technology refresh, they're rather shiny looking laptops, and you know, they're all off booting into Ubuntu. 
Next, please. Uh, are you going to take questions at the end? Or? Oh, questions any time. Okay. Wh Back, please. Which country or status are you from? Oh, um, originally from Germany, but this is all in Adelaide, where um, uh, yeah, live in Adelaide. So uh, just, I'm from New South Wales, so uh, and I run something similar at mm -hmm. my children's uh, primary school, but the Department of Ed in New South Wales refuses to allow you to modify any of your equipment, even if it's not networked to the Department of Ed. Yes, um, I didn't modify any of their equipment. Um, I, I didn't change any BIOS options. Uh, they had actually locked out DVD booting in the BIOS. Uh, but what you do is you press F12 to do a net boot, and then when it aborts the net boot, it boots off the DVD anyway. So how was the principle? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But how was the principle about that at the time? It was fairly relaxed. Um, I, I didn't make it overly clear that I'm going to be booting another operating. I did mention that this is what I was planning to do. Um, I, I imagine if the teachers had sort of gone into the nitty gritty and the, and the rules and regulations, they might have turned around and said, maybe not. Um, but I got away with it. And uh, no damage to any computing equipment. Um, yeah, quick question, very quick. charging for laptops and you just take one out of the charger, write down which one you took and mm -hmm. take it to where you want to use it. Yeah. Oh yeah. All, all those now live That's in a rather... Uh, okay. A library. M? All of those laptops now live in a rather nice little sort of cart with all the charging stations in it. So has the school completely moved away from like desktop PCs and gone over entirely to laptops? Uh, question was, have they moved away from desktop to laptop? And the answer is yes. They used to have a whole bunch of desktops in that very room. Um, for student use, they've gone to these laptops. But in classrooms, they actually... Oh, in, in some of the classrooms, they still have a couple oh. of um, uh, older desktops that I never see in use. <laughs> okay, next, please. Ah, that's annoying. There are a whole bunch of icons down the left-hand side which show what kind of is on here. Uh, there's an extras folders with the installers. Uh, there's a link to the online, uh, to the copy on the DVD of the Buddy cybersecurity thing. Uh, Celestia and um, Stellarium, the two exploration uh, virtual observatory type things. Uh, Child's Play and GCompre. Child's Play is kind of like GCompre, a similar sort of aim. Um, I think GCompre is a bit more polished and like it more, but they're both got some really cool stuff. Um, good of on robot, uh, Java OSM, um, a link to the, to the wiki. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff loaded onto there, including the Arduino IDE. Unfortunately, not the version of the Arduino IDE that'll run the Leo stick. But um, yeah, um, the, the 700 meg ISO is blown out to a 4 gig DVD. I've just kept adding stuff that was really cool. And there is so much of it to add. So I've brought some of the DVDs around. Alex. So, um, uh, the, yeah, grab one, play with it, on the condition you give it to a kid when you're done. <laughs> Just like the bristle bots. Sorry. Will your presentation be online somewhere as well? Will my presentation be online? Yes, um, I'm, I'll hand it in to the, um, to the organizers, and it's uh, sort of actually already online. I just haven't put the URL up yet. <clears throat> the wiki is also on the last slide, which contains some more detailed information about the sessions. Next, please. Melting silver. This is the one I was talking about before. This is my dad in his workshop with tools that are older than me, doing tasks that are older than him. Melting silver, forms, crucibles. This, this, this kind of... I was really amazed and happily surprised how much this grabbed the kid's imagination. So, and, and then, you know, bringing the stuff in and, you know, here's, here's a bag of silver granules and the kids play with them. And, it was and, heavy. It was, yeah, it was heavy. Next, please, Emma. Rocketry. I am sad to report that some of those rockets are no longer with us. <laughs> they survived the launch, but were not recovered. Um, that one's mine. This is the little girl who came up with the orbit or bust on it. <laughs> and this is the young man who came up with the awesome color scheme and the lightning bolt. So that was um, last, year, last LCA's contribution to my little program. I, I went around talking about the rocket. There it is. Oh, poor thing. 
He's alive, he's alive, see? <laughs> no one called the RSPCA, they both made it back alive. Yeah, so there's Tuts and Penny. Uh, Tuts went up in that one, Penny went up in Bedell's multi-stage monster. They both made it back alive. Yay! There's the rocket taking <laughs> off. <laughs> Next, please. And uh, here's me talking about the rocket at the local cub group. And uh, I don't know if you can clearly see it, but we're all pretty drenched. It was a hot day. We had some water games. And then I'm talking about the rocket. One of the other things in the rocket, apart from the um, padding, I mean passenger, um, was the uh, mob send out, which was built in the Arduino mini conf. So um, that was, a, again, an opportunity to talk about GPS and data recording and, hey, you know what, that little chip is a computer that's more powerful than the first three computers I own combined and stuff like that. Ah, <laughs> oh, dinosaurs. <laughs> Next, please. Squishy circuits. Okay, this is unbelievably cool. Um, you get some plate, please do. You get some Play-Doh and they have recipes to make it conducting and then you have blinking lights. You can make circuits with this stuff. Uh, you, you, there are two different circuits. Uh, you can make conducting and insulating and using the two different kinds of um, Play-Doh you can obviously make all kinds of forms and figures. I've tended to not bother making the insulating because it's a relatively short session and to talk about, you know, and the insulating you can put, it's all too hard. But, so what I've done is I've, I've made loads and loads of these batches of Play-Doh with the help of my kids and taken them along and everybody sort of, you know, gets, gets to take a little bit home. I've slightly modified the recipe um, to mix all the ingredients and then go and heat it. That means that even the littlest of kids can help mix it all up. Then it gets taken into the kitchen to get heated, and then it comes back and they can play with it. The other thing is you have a batch in reserve in case what they make doesn't work. Um, yeah, uh, I created a, a theremin out of an Arduino. So um, depending on, on you, you put two probes in a bunch of this stuff, and depending on how you squish it together and pull it apart, it changes the resistance, and that changes the tone generated. And next time when I do that, I'll include a volume knob. <laughs> yeah, I ended up putting my jacket on top of the speaker, but, but the kids are sort of having a wee wee. Ah, this is cool fun. <laughs> Was there a question? No. Okay, so um, next, please, Emma. So this is my Mark One power supply, benchtop power supply, really fantastic. Emma. Short circuit protection, all, all the bells and whistles, and uh, kids having loads and loads of fun with it. But unfortunately, it went counter to the policy of, and then the kids get to take it home. So the next version, 9 volt battery and a battery snap. It's that simple. Okay, so that's what I've got here. A couple of 9 volt batteries, a couple of battery snaps, LEDs, you know, salt, flour, cream of tartar. That's all you need. Cream of tartar. Uh, apparently that's not easy to get everywhere, so you can use lemon juice instead. So, yeah, one of the little creations. Now, <clears throat> I was talking about, you know, being creative and all that. So, of course, being creative and all that, I go and allot everybody their little piece of this, that, and the other. Emma? And what the kids turn around and do is they, uh, they collaborate and share and, and pull resources and do really awesome stuff like that. <laughs> okay? So that's Alexander's class. And uh, as you can see by the different colors, that's, you know, a half dozen of them saying, hey, what, how, how much more awesome would this be if we worked together? <laughs> I am so proud of this picture. Okay? <laughs> I love this picture. A lot of batteries. A lot of batteries, a lot of LEDs. Next, please. Fun. So what worked? Uh, blinking lights, the, uh, you know, making the little switches, that, that really worked well. The, uh, the bristle bots, um, I do have... If you have one of the bots, I have a toothbrush, which you can cut a little bit off, and I have the double-sided tape you need to finish it, and I have the batteries. So um, again, this is something where, uh, w with the younger class, they they basically all got what you have now, some of you have now, fully assembled, fully soldered, all they had to do is put the double-sided tape on, snap the toothbrush, and they all got it working. So snap that one really worked. Do I have the resources? Yes. Um, 
I got that stuff from uh, Elect something. It's all on the wiki. Uh, the cost ends up being about four bucks for the bristle bots once you have the battery and the battery holder and the, um, and the motor itself. Uh, I, I was really lucky. Um, don't look for battery holders because they all have annoying little things down the bottom to go into PC boards. You want to look for the ones that you sew onto clothing because, of, you know, that sewable, electronic wearable geek stuff. They work really, really well. The bristle boards were fun, especially the part where you decapitated the toothbrushes. <laughs> yes. Decapitating toothbrushes is fun. You get, you, get, you get a great big pair of side cutters and you go snip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So when you go into schools with the kids and you're doing stuff like soldering, do you ever get any resistance in the sort of political legal bureaucracy system? <coughs> it's like, oh, you can't do that. It's not safe for the kids. Okay, the question was, when I go into schools and do soldering, is there resistance and OHS and, and all that sort of stuff? I haven't done soldering with the schools yet. I've done it with the Cubs. Okay. Um, we have permission slips and all that sort of stuff and, and if we break one well we have a signed form saying we were allowed to. Um, I imagine in the older schools, uh, in the older years I'll be able to go in and do soldering with the kids. I would love to do that. Um, maybe do some Arduino shields or something like that. But, but yes, um, I'll talk about it a bit more later but you do have to be really careful and you do have to be really mindful of the obligation the school is under towards the kids and and you know I know this is cool and fun and geeky and, and mostly safe but you have to convince the school and um, that's not easy sometimes unfortunately. It helps if you have a good relationship with the principal. Yeah, it helps if you have a relationship. Actually um, what really helps is when you do it to one school and then your kid goes to another school and you go to that school and you say, hey, I'd like to go and do this. What's this? I've never heard of this. They chased down Alexander in the uh, playground and, and the teacher asked, so what's all this about? He happened to be surrounded by a bunch of kids who had done this last year and there was a chorus of, yeah, this was really cool. <laughs> that was an easy sell. <laughs> so yeah, word of mouth and yeah. Um, that was fun. Okay, what do we get up to? Um, G Compre, absolutely awesome, really, really fun stuff. Uh, the DVD, Melting Silver, unexpected, but really rewarding. The paper aeroplanes, the kids had so much fun with that, and they sort of improved on the designs, and you, you color them in, they're even better. Yee. Rocketry, simple machines. It's one thing to know that a pulley works. It's another thing to have two girls Emma's size beat me in a tug of war because they have a pulley working for them. <laughs> I'm really glad I did that talk because I was just going to show how a jack works and jack my car up and then I realized I had a bolt in my tire so I said, and now I'm going to change the tire as well. <laughs> so I'm glad I did that. Squishy circuits really worked well. Next please, Emma. Circuit simulator. This is like GNU cap but it's all online and it's aimed way too high. It didn't work. There's details on the web. The cryptography stuff, it kind of works, but I presented it badly. I've written a program to hopefully do it better. The Lego Dodgems failed for the right reasons. The live, as in grenade DVD, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I did a sort of a mystery circuit where um, I got the kids to try to guess what was in the circuit box. I, I aimed too high and they sort of didn't bother with it. So, oh well, it was fun. Next, please. So far, so good. I've been in two schools and one scout hall. I've been in three classes and two cub packs. I sort of did almost five terms, but the last term was really only one session by proxy, which was uh, Bristlebots. Um, I've done 30 lessons and six sessions with the cubs. I've burnt and given out over 60 of these DVDs, and there are over 100 potential geeks out there. <laughs> and here are two of them. So, next please. What I desperately need is ideas. I've done this for a year, I've got one or two sessions up my sleeve, but seeing as how half the other stuff came from LCA, I don't know why I can't get more stuff from LCA. So if you have an idea of how to demonstrate cold fusion using you know, vegetables <laughs> or something, let me know and I'll make a session around it. Um, possibly venues. If I can't get new material, I'll get new audiences. The thing I would really love to get is more geeks. Is for somebody here in this audience or somewhere to say, you know what? If that guy can do it, maybe I can too. If you, 
if, you, if, if somebody here were to go out and do this, that would be awesome. Um, you know, get some more geeks going. Um, and uh, talent. Uh, I am absolutely horrible at all sorts of things, and if you know, somebody knows how to make a website that doesn't look really horrible, and they want to help me, that would be really, really cool. Thank Next. you. <clears throat> Massive thanks to the teachers, Karen, Kate, and Sophie. They are under so much pressure to do so many things in so little time. For them to take the risk and allow me into their class and potentially damage one of their children or, or several. <laughs> Thank you so much. They were awesome. Tech support, Daniel and Peter. Uh, Peter helped me with doing some soldering um, with the kids. Absolutely awesome. Thank you, guys. The kids in the schools, they surprised me. They... It's cliche, they energize me. You do one of these sessions, it's really hard work, but you feel really good afterwards. Uh, Camden Park, that's my scout group. Uh, the other leaders, Doug, Marie, Mark, Martin and Robert, who kind of, you know, did what they had to do. They, they had to reschedule their, their stuff every now and then because my, you know, my bits weren't arriving on time. So thank you for them. The Cubs, who did awesome. My wonderful wife. My guinea pigs. <laughs> my mentors. Mostly my dad and my year 12 physics teacher and uh, all the inspirations that I've had that turned me into the geek I am today. A lot of those inspirations are actually at this very conference, so thank you guys. And, um, Nick, last page. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the website. That's me. Any questions, any information you want, let me know. I've kind of got the website locked down and read-only because I want to be able to point kids at it and know there's not going to be any spam on it. But if you want to do this or if you, uh, if you want to improve it, let me know. I, you know, sign you up an account or whatever. So, um, yeah. I think... Oh, um, I have squishy circuit stuff to take away. Um, little, little bags to keep it fresh until you get home. I've got some LEDs. All you need is some 9-volt batteries. I really suggest you don't put this in your carry-on. <laughs> and if you do forget you've ever known me <laughs> okay thank you really thanks very much Thomas we've got some have anyone got any additional questions other than the ones that were asked during the oh the microphone's coming um you, you touched on the circuit simulator, but you didn't actually explain what it is and why it failed. Is, oh, okay. Um, at the high school, uh, sorry, at the school Alexander moved to, they didn't, I uh, wasn't able to get the live DVD going and um, uh, I couldn't get anything else going. So what I found was a, a wonderful online Java-based circuit simulator. It's actually really cool. You kind of get to put on oscilloscope traces and it gives you readouts of voltages and currents. And... It's really, really good, but it's, it was way above the kids' heads, and I should have realized it before going in. Um, the really good part, though, is that it has some really cool circuits like spark app generators, and you know. uh, there are links on the wiki to find it. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a really good piece of software, but it was a little bit mis-aimed. So, um, yeah, GNU Cap would have been better. There's, there's another, uh, 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 oh, sorry. There's another app. Under um, K called K Stars, I don't know if you've seen that. I have seen K Stars. Uh, the the difference between say that and um, say Celestia or um, Stellarium is that if you if you then look at say a, pl a particular planet, you right click on that, it'll actually be linked to say like the JPL or the Wikipedia page cool. for that particular planet or that particular okay. um, uh, stellar body as well, which my kids really like doing. I've got a few hundred meg left on the DVD. I can I can add that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, K Stars. So how does this link up with the science curriculum that they're teaching just as part of the course for these uh, age, age groups? How does it link up? Um, not as well as I probably should have made it link up. I did a couple of sessions in support of what they were doing. So they were doing electricity, so I did uh, the, the blinking lights. And they were doing Egypt, so I did the simple machines. Um, it wasn't really part of uh, the... St the structured course. I mean, this is where I'm, I'm so grateful the teachers gave me a shot because they have a curriculum. They have every minute of the day mapped out. And for them to turn around and say, hey, there you go, have an hour a week for a term, you know, 
really fantastic of them to give me that opportunity and um, I think I could probably have done a better job integrating with what their needs are as, as, a, as for what the curriculum needs to get the, through. So, yeah, good, good question, yes. Um, I note that you're um, an Akela. I was wondering if you considered um, the Jamboree in, in the same way that the ham radio guys do um, a ham radio and electronics dis um, stand um, for, the, for the young scouts at the Jamboree. I was wondering whether something like this might be a way to promote it to a wider audience. Okay. Yes. Probably. <laughs> um, we do um, Jota, Joti. You do Jota for the Cubs, yeah. Jamboree over the air, Jamboree yeah. over the internet. Yeah. Um, I, I was more thinking of, of a physical presentation in one of the one of the tents where you could have the, 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 yeah. the young scouts sitting down doing the same sort of stuff, but yep. you'd expose it to sort of 1,000, 1,500, 5,000 kids across the, the long weekend. That's a really good... I'm, I'm a Cub leader, strictly speaking, Jamboree scouts, but no, yeah, no, yeah that's, I'm, that's I'm involved really, in scouts, not Cub. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, yeah. In fact, um, there was a, a cubbery where, where I could have done stuff like that if I'd thought about it. Thank you for the idea. Um, but unfortunately, I got shipped off overseas for a week right in the middle of it. So, uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Um, I did sort of go to the, the meetings of all the cubs and said, look, this is the stuff I'm doing. If you want to do it with your group, I'll come along and help. I've sort of had an underwhelming response to that so far. Um, was there a... So yeah, obviously, um, you say so. A bristle bot, for example, is about four bucks or whatever. Mm. Do you fund that yourself, or do you get funding from the school, or yeah, where does it come from? I've been offered funding for the school, but I was asked not to take money just in case the school decides it's too expensive and they don't want me back. Okay. So I I would feel very very wrong being paid for doing something that is loads of fun. <laughs> Just the, somebody up at the back was just asking about whether it fits in with a school science curriculum. And one of the things that I found is that uh, this might, again, like I said, uh, two of my, my two oldest kids are at primary. And um, is that the school's often looking for something new and different, which is what I found from talking to the, to the principal and other uh, teachers, and that they'll find space for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and make space for you. They'll even draw kids in, in the case that I was teaching them uh, graphic editing. And they would take kids out of different classes who were interested so they'd work out a time that was suitable for all the teachers and then I would get a group of kids from disparate classes coming to the, the school library so we could do graphic editing. And it wasn't related specifically to any subject, but it was just that the school felt that it was something that would be really interesting and a, a useful thing for them to learn. There's a, a lunchtime library sort of group thing at my son's school now and I'm interested in, in, in doing that. Yeah. Smaller group maybe, maybe a bit easier. Um, oh. Um, your question of funding, it just reminded me, one of the things I plan to do is carbon dioxide races. <laughs> you can get, um, you know, kits of 25 or kits of 50, and uh, that's going to need a little bit of a co-payment, I think. So, uh, you know, six or seven bucks per racer, depending on how it works out. But, yeah, um, uh, the, it's a hobby for me, and hobbies are supposed to be expensive and fun. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Did the school ask what your qualifications were? Did you have to have any teaching experience or anything like that? I wasn't asked. Um, I had to have uh, a police check. Um, I already had one because I was working at the canteen. Um, their, their, the original requirements were a geek who can show us how to use Lego Mindstorm, and, and I fit that. So <laughs> And um, I think after that, it was just kind of a get to know each other and, uh, and like I said, a lot of courage to, to let me go in and do, you know, hey, look, I'm going to teach them about how to work a rail gun next week. Is that all right with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking there's also an opportunity here just for people to teach their own children and mm -hmm. you're providing some fabulous materials. Yeah. Um, because something I'm becoming very aware of is teach your children science before somebody else does. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and soldering. You can teach them soldering as well. Here you go, Em. Emma did this. Um, it, she's had it for a couple of years. The battery leads have come off, so she fixed that at the mini-conf on Monday. Um, I'm sorry I don't have any of Alexander's circuits here, but yeah. Um, OHS, if they're your own kids, you're kind of, you're allowed to break them. Um, so you can teach them soldering at a younger age. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Just on the, the question that you were asking, because I think it's something that's happened at the school where I am. My qualification is I have a uh, master's honours in sociology. <laughs> and I've taught in sociology and psychology. I have no qualifications in graphic editing or video editing at all, other than a couple of decades of experience. So when you're speaking to them and you can actually give examples of what you've done and show enthusiasm, as long as they like you, they're pretty the primary schools especially are pretty much willing to give you a go and if the kids like it, then that's pretty much the result that you're looking for, and that's what they're looking for too. I play around with penguins and I oh, um, questions? Oh, sorry. One of the things about the, the Playmobil one is really, really interesting because even the kids who aren't into the circuitry, they just end up playing with Playmobil. So um, sometimes you have, a, especially in a larger group, you have very diverse abilities and interests and this is a really good session for one of those groups because it, it caters to two streams quite naturally. So. Any other questions? No? no? Well, on behalf of the organisers of LCA 2012, I'd like to present you with a, a gift thank and, uh, and thank you for a very interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, There is actually no speaker in here after us until after lunch. So uh, if Thomas wants to hang around and, and chat, then happy to. I'm not going to kick you out. Okay.